What's your day like? If he's not in your day, if he's not in your schedule, if there's no prayer time, if there's no Bible reading, if there's no feeding of your spirit, if there's nothing that hardly acknowledges God all week long, all you are is a, is a trunk Christian. You, you have him in the car, in the trunk, and you pull him out happy hour every Sunday morning. I'm telling you that he will affect your schedule. Every day there ought to be a prayer place. Every day there ought to be time spent in the Word. Did you know that if you read the Bible 15 minutes a day, you can read the entire Bible through every year? It doesn't take huge amounts of time, but it's just scheduling it in and saying, you know, I must read the Bible and I must pray. These are important things. And if you'll do it, if you'll read the Word, the Word will read you. And dusty Bibles lead to dirty lives. And if you'll read this book, it'll clean you. It'll cleanse you. It'll sanctify you. It'll set you free. It'll help you. It'll strengthen you. And you may not need that word that you read that morning. You, it may mean, or that night when you go to bed and you open it up, it may mean nothing to you. You just read it. But the next day at about three o'clock when all hell's breaking loose and the Holy Spirit will remind you of the very words you read last night, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And suddenly a confidence comes because you've had him in your schedule. When you wake up in the morning, don't have a prayer list. Have a list that says this. This is what's bothering me today. Have you ever tried to pray and your mind wanders? You know what your mind is wandering to? What you really ought to be praying about. And your mind is wandering at this anxious thought about money or something, and you're trying to be religious and pray these nice prayers. You'll either pray or you're worried. And your old worry list is your new prayer list. Consult the Lord, pray about it, ask him, ask him. That's your duty. That's your responsibility to ask the Lord about everything. Before you buy a house, consult the Lord, pray about it. I don't want anything that he doesn't want me to have. I know that what he gives me, he will maintain. He will take care of. I don't want it to become a problem because I didn't consult the Lord. That's why it's so important just to maybe at the beginning of the morning to spend some time in worship, spend some time in your car saying, God, today I consult the counsel of the Lord and I don't know what I'm going to face, but I just ask you to give me wisdom and I just ask you to make me spiritual today. And I just ask you to wake up my spirit and my ear to hear because I really don't want to lean on my own understanding, but in all my ways, I acknowledge you and you will direct my path delights God when we stop long enough to say, I need guidance from the Lord. It delights him. He said, I'm your shepherd. And I love it when you ask me to lead you. So often we think, well, Lord, I can come and pray about the big things in life. You uh, know I can take care of the little things in life. Oh, no. Pray about everything. In fact, when you have your devotional time in the morning, and I hope that you do, Pray about the whole day. Just take your calendar and just go through the whole day. Pray about everything. And the Lord will give you guidance. What do you do when trouble comes? Do you turn to a bottle? Do you turn to appeal? Do you turn to screaming? Do you turn to anger? Do you turn to depression? Do you turn to fear and worry and anxiety? The real sign that Jesus is first in your life. You, you meet someone who he's first and it's not that they're exempt from trouble, but when trouble comes, they know who to run to. I will lift up my, my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. I run and cling to him in trouble. My first thought is not the bank. My first thought is not the doctor. My first thought is not this or that. My first thought is Jesus. Who do you run to in trouble? That's a real sign of whether or not he's first. And when he's first, he will bless you in ways that will astound you. What if you would decide today to give God your all? I mean, is that it? I'm going to, I'm making the commitment. I'm going all out for God. 
And you're either looking at the enemy or you're looking at the angels. You're looking at the problem or you're looking at the promises. And one thing that we need if we're going to live a victorious powerful life is the right perspective. You have to see what God sees. No matter what you're going through, don't get your eyes on the littleness of your problem. He's working all things. There's a big picture to every trial, to every challenge, to every adversity we go through. There's a big picture and he's working all things together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. Perspective is important and pray every day. God God, show me the big picture. Show me and help me to keep seeing the big perspective of what you see, not just the temporal situation that is, that is causing me to be fearful and worried. Get God's and see God's perspective. If you want victory in your life, you've got to constantly pray, Lord, open my eyes and let me see the best and let me see the good and let me see the bigness of what your plan and purpose is for my life. Did you this morning get up and say, I am commanded by God to restir my joy, to rejoice? When you come to a place in your life where you face important decisions can't afford to use your intellect alone. We're supposed to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We are supposed to seek the counsel of the Lord on everything. You have to learn to ask before you act. You have to learn to ask before you get in covenant with people, before you start businesses, before you do things, and then you just expect and hope that God will back you up. If you're picking a spouse to marry, better consult the Lord. You better ask the Lord's counsel. Should it take that job? You better ask the counsel of the Lord. And this sounds so silly, but I'm amazed at how prayerless we become. I'm amazed at how many, even in my life, how many decisions I make and I haven't even asked the counsel of the Lord. And the Lord said, now you can't afford to be making intellectual decisions because you think you know everything. I need you. I wait on you to wait on me. And you don't just rely on your intellect, even though God gives us intellect to make wise decisions. But it's kind of a ego and it's kind of pride to proudful to not pray about it pray about it if you will seek his counsel god already has a solution if you will seek his counsel god already has a procedure there's an unseen hand that wants to guide our lives and why wonder if most of the problems that we face could not be solved and we wouldn't get in them but we did not consult the Lord. If you've got a prayer place and if you don't have one, get one. Because when you go there, that is holy ground and God knows that you're very present. In other words, you're saying, this is so important that I'm coming and I'm waiting. I'm not telling you what to do, nor am I asking you for anything. I'm waiting on you. When we stop working, God starts working. When we stop working, God starts working. When we stop working, God starts working. But when you stop and you say, here I am. I'm wrestling with a lot of stuff. I really need wisdom. I really need you to do your will. I don't even know what path I need to take. But I'm waiting on you. I wonder, I wonder if we would take time, if we would, if we, if it would never be said of us from this point tonight, they sought not the counsel of the Lord. I wonder how many, how many blessings we would step into just by learning to wait on the Lord. To spend time in his presence.